everybody. Today we're at Fort Michelin Mackinac in Mackinac City, Michigan. This place is really cool, so let's check it out. There's the sign. That is the Mackinac Bridge. The entrance is under the Mackinac Bridge. So let's head in there. Okay, we are in. And there is a lot of Canadian wildfire smoke again today. The UP is over there, you can't see it. The Mackinac Bridge is right there, you can't really see the towers. One of these days those fires will end. This is Lake Michigan on this side. On the other side of the bridge is Lake Huron. There's the, the end of the bridge, you can see all the traffic going. So the last time that we were both here was our fourth grade field trips. A long time ago, so yeah. we don't really remember anything. So it's all new to us again because it's been so long. Yeah. So this says, welcome to Colonial Michelmackinac. Yes, it's pronounced with a W on the end, not a C. Whenever it's a C, it's always Mackinac. We've got this building here. We'll find out what this is. I guess it's just for wood. It's a simple building here. Still pretty cool though. So here's a nice shot of the Mackinac Bridge if it wasn't covered in forest fire smoke, but it's still pretty. And we're coming up on this canoe here. Hi. <laughs> pretty good. Good. Yeah. First time here? Uh, we were last here on our fourth grade field trips back in the 80s. Okay. Cool. Little <laughs> so bridge. it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. I would say more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, we don't live that far from here, so we really No, we only live in Onaway. We just haven't come. <laughs> I've noticed that. Sometimes you look close to a thing, you're always like, ah, I'm just going to go over there. But then you don't because it's so close. Yep. Yeah. I <laughs> So, yeah, this is stop number one on your map. This is called Voyager Landing. That's who Matt and I are dressed as, so one of those French Canadian voyagers that you have seen here in the 19th century. Okay. People don't like the like the truck drivers of the fur trade. All right, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, really the backbone of bringing supplies in here, taking furs back, or even taking trade goods out further west, like Wisconsin and oh, Chicago, okay. like, uh, yeah. Grand Portage, Prairie du Chien, those areas, and bringing furs back to here to go to Montreal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. So that, that is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. All right, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Okay. you at least you got a nice place to sit. It's nice and breezy. Oh, yes. What are you told about Oh, yeah, that'll be bad. <laughs> All right, you have a great day. So I do not speak French, but I think that says bat batu. If you want to pause that, you can read it. But, yeah, that's pretty cool. With a little fire pit by it. Now we're coming up on the fort itself. Lake Michigan. Still pretty, but you can't can barely see the UP over there. And it's only five miles over there. But yeah, that's that's really cool. And here's a cannon. I think they light this off at some point. They did give us a schedule, so we'll see when that's supposed to be. But it's roped off, so we're not supposed to mess with it. Okay, we're finally heading inside the fort itself. Wow, looks really cool. And they do have, like you saw in the last clip, costume performers, historically accurate. Here's their garden <laughs> with an outhouse. It's pretty cool. And there's this building. Okay, they have a movie going in here. If we were in this area, we would always It's really cool, you just sit on boxes. who was one of our main staples. Also, it was for trade. They all kinds of trade stuff. This is basically all about the fur trade. This America whole fort. Before the arrival of Europeans, and it was just a natural area to come and meet. And also, got the, the, the storehouse. A lot of our ancestors are buried on the islands. Europeans reached the Straits of Mackinac in the early 17th Supplying century. Supplying an army. French explorers found a region rich in fur-bearing animals and well-established. And maintaining animals. alliances. These animals, especially the beaver. But, yeah, all kinds of bundles of fur, I suppose, and other other goods. Okay, this is rum, or at least that one is. That that one is anyway. 
But yeah, it's not just fur, it's all the goods they needed for this area. Wow, this is all pretty. Really pretty in here. Really cool. Pretty fascinating, right? Yeah. So here's this building. Let's see what this building is. The last building we were in was called the King's Storehouse. This is called Com Commanding Officer's House. Here's the parlor. Yeah, lots of pretty stuff in there. All safely blocked off so nobody can mess with it. That's really nice. So then there's lots of information in this room. Officer's professional life. And if you guys need to pause anywhere to read any of this, go ahead. But yeah, lots of cool stuff in here. This is the commanding officer at Michelin Mackinac. These are pipes. They find a lot of artifacts here. I mean, the, the fort itself is recreated, but there was a fort here before and they find all these artifacts in the dirt all the time. Officer's social life, that's pretty. And here's some old bottles and some cups that they found. They're always excavating here. Look at that fork. Then we've got the, the de pasters. I guess that's a family. Here, I'll back up a little bit in case you want to pause it. There you go. Rebecca em embroidered a set of flags for Arnett's militia unit. So there's that. And then this is more about that family. Some jewelry. Buttons and things. I guess they had a dog. There's a big fireplace, a really big fireplace. Really fancy. And then this is more about that family. So. Okay, a home for the commanding officer. These are the blueprints. Okay, and then we head down this hallway. Don't know where that goes. It's locked. There's the bed chamber. Wow, that bed's better than our bed. <laughs> it's a nice chair too. That's called a Queen Anne's chair. I used to have one, but not not one of these. A cheap one. <laughs> nice stuff. And here's the kitchen. There's another big fireplace. And then we head up here to the garden where all these flowers are. This is pretty. It's a big step there, Don. Yeah. Wow. But they grow all kinds of things here. I actually got seeds for, for Jacob's ladder beans from them once. Nice. Oh yeah, this is the garden that we were over on that side. This is the garden we were looking in at. That's really nice. Here's a sundial. Let's test it out. It says it's 1110. Well, I don't know if that's really that accurate. <laughs> All kinds of nice stuff in here. Flowers. Beans and bees. Here's, well, oh, there it goes. A pretty butterfly. This outhouse here. I don't think you can go in there. No, I guess you can. The privy. <laughs> they have it blocked off though. But yeah, if you want to read that sign, there you go. All right, and then we'll head up these stairs here. Okay, here's the cannon. You can look out over the lake and the bridge, all the way down there. 
cool, isn't it, Don? Yeah. Wow. And there's this one. Okay, we go back down, but we're gonna keep going this way. There's a bunch of little lookouts, places to stick guns through. Some more garden. Looks like they replaced that roof recently, which is good because they have to keep up on it or it'll fall down. It is hot. Here's another little cannon and another lookout. It's a nice cool breeze today. It's good because the sun is hot. There's a nice lookout. Okay, here's a really nice lookout. First you see all this, and then you come this way, and there's the bridge. This is all open right here. There's some more of the lower peninsula. People on the beach. The view would be better if it wasn't for all the Canadian forest fire smoke, but it's not too bad. And on we go. I see the church there. Here's a, an up close shot of that nice new roof. These flowers smell really good. Standing right here, they smell so good. And look at all those bees. Here's another nice view. We're still up top. Now here we come around the side of this one. Lots of garden stuff, lots and lots. The way it really would have been, because they all had to grow their own food back then. Oh, I didn't even notice that chicken house actually has chickens. See, I don't know if you can spot them too good, but we'll get down there and look, film them more up close, but there are real live chickens down there. Okay, now we're in the inner corner. There's the bridge. The the inner corner look out everything that's out there that's cool TPs wigwams whatever you want to call them but yeah there's a nice cool breeze yeah, that's right. Why are you shaking on it? Yeah, I thought I felt it moving. So I was checking to see if I was feeling it right or not. Well, <laughs> all right, heading down. Very gorgeous though, everything here. And here we have domestic animals at Michilimackinac, if you want to pause that and read it. And little lookouts here too out over there again. There we go. There's the chickens. It's pretty cool they have real animals here still. Bok bok chickens. <laughs> All right heading up to another one again. Here's another cannon and all the tools and muskets this view here. More of these gun holes. Much closer to that now. And if anybody is wondering if you can take pictures and film here, yup. Uh, just gonna stand here and enjoy the breeze for a little bit. And the view. There's the ex excavating site. They're always finding stuff in there. And yes, we will get down closer to it in a little while here. Yep. Gorgeous. History is always fun, especially when it's your own state. So here's a root cellar. That's pretty cool. 
that would be the way they'd have to keep their food back then. No refrigerators or freezers. Okay, this one is about the powder magazine. Like I say, pause if you want to. Okay, and here's another lookout. There are more than four of these. They're not just in the corners. And we're on the other side of that now. That's the parking lot over there. And here's another nice lookout. Oh, I can feel the breeze off the lake again. It feels so good. The sun is really hot. And here's a cedar bark roof. That would be definitely historically accurate. And then the, the root cellar again. Definitely a pretty view. I hope those aren't storm clouds over there. But by the time that gets here, we'll be done. So we shouldn't get rained on. And now we're gonna head up to the last one of these. We've made it around the whole fort up here. And there's some wagon wheels down there. So before we go up these stairs, there's a lookout down here and another cannon. Yep, the bridge again, the Mackinac Bridge in Lake Michigan. And then back over here, we already walked on that trail to come in. Yeah, where, where the people are walking in, where, where the entry is. Yep, nice and cool up here, so nice. The air coming off the bridge is so nice, oh wow. Something's going on over there. Oh, yeah. All the traffic has stopped across the whole bridge. There might be construction right now. I think that's the problem. All the northbound people are kind of foobard. <laughs> but yeah, that's crazy. Glad we're not on there right now. It's really nice just standing here feeling this breeze. Ah, uh, stand here all day. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, and the water smells good. Yeah, the water does smell good. And then over here, we have kayakers out there. And another fort view. And then this one is an even better fort view. There we are, back on level ground. Some kind of a thing right there. But, yep, back on the ground. Actually, looks like goes to the set of axles over there. Oh, the, that thing that I just showed you goes to those wheels? Yeah, that's what it looked like. Oh, okay. So here's the Southeast Row House, Solomon Levy House. And that's a taxidermy. Well, it's not taxidermy, it's furs. And the fireplace, pretty cool. There's another sign if you want to pause it. But yeah, I wouldn't mind this bet this house. I mean, this is it. <laughs> yeah. It's like a one bedroom apartment. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And then we have some artifacts here. The Trader's Storeroom. We've got glass beads, bells, jewelry, highly prized items. All this stuff was found excavating out there from the original fort that used to be here, which they have recreated, like I said. And fur trade craftsmen, arrowheads and that's pretty cool. That's a cool, I think that's a pipe. Yeah, pipe bowl. That's pretty cool. And they found that buried in the ground here. That's cute. Effigy. Ooh. All kinds of cool stuff. Okay, so this is Ezekiel Solomon's root cellar. And this is what we showed from the outside. I guess they don't actually have you go in there. Well, come over here, you see a piece of a plate down in there. It always looks like a piece of a plate. Yeah. I don't know if you can get Yeah, down. right oh, there, yeah, a piece of a plate. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But that's where they kept their food, so it didn't go bad. And here's another view of the other edge. And this says, French architecture at Michel Mackinac. There's a lot of French going on here. Oh, here's the other side of the bedroom. 
what it's not just a bedroom it was somebody's whole house and yeah very cool and now here's the other side of the building yep, another living quarters with all kinds of cool old stuff in it look a sword on the bed <laughs> This one is a little fancier than the other one. They apparently made more money on this side. <laughs> Here's a cabinet. British officers at the Straits. And Lieutenant George Close of the 8th. You know what to do if you want to pause. Really pretty. Yeah. Maybe this was the boss's side. Uh huh. Because it's definitely nicer than on the other side. But yeah, look at that wood below. Yeah. Get a little closer here. John likes wood stoves since he ha we had one in the house for so long. But yeah, really, really nice. And the one that we were just in was Southeast Row House, Lieutenant Close House. Oh, a lieutenant. That's why it's so much fancier. And here's the excavation area up close. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Finding anything? Yeah, we found stuff every single day. Cool. Mostly little stuff, but on occasion we find some larger stuff. Okay. <laughs> the stuff we find the most of is probably fish bones. That's because, um, well, for obvious reasons, that was one of the main things they were eating. Yeah. Yeah. They must have read that must have read shots and beads, glass, nails, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, it is. Well, good luck. Now, here they are working on it over here on stuff. And then we're kind of, kind of in the middle a little bit. think. <laughs> yeah. Here's some info about the excavation if you want to pause it. More garden. Really nice stuff. Are these those Jacob's ladders? Jacob's ladder beans maybe? Some of it we do. Cabbages will start Lots of, lots of nice stuff. Here's a, an oven, I think. Sod oven. That's cool. It's obvious they've used it. There's some wood and stuff. And some more vegetables. And these, the other side of the vegetables. Lots of bees, lots of pollination. And here's the other side of the excavation plot. I think that's what they call it, a plot. I don't know. I could be wrong. Okay, here's the South Southeast Row House, Unit 1. Another nice big fireplace. Some of the people who were here. A lot of them, of British. Medis, or Matisse, Medis, I don't know. Okay, heading down. Powder magazine and firearms of the frontier. Down we go. So there's a, a big gun. Firearms of the frontier. Another sign for you. Some traps and a fox. All kinds of cool stuff. Look at that. Here's a musket. 1730s. More gun pieces. 
all kinds of gun pieces. It's nice and cool down here. Technically a basement, I guess. Be, and then the brown bess was the standard sh shoulder arm of the British infantry throughout the 18th century. And then you can read on if you want. That's cool too. Military firearms. Artillery. And another uh, blueprint or whatever. Wow, that is, stand next to that. <laughs> For size. In the bottom, I was yeah. bar out by knee level. Yeah, and then it goes up and up and up and up and up. Who could hold that? Look at that huge gun. <laughs> yeah, look at the butt there. You know, where it go up against the door. Yeah. Fat. Heavy. I bet yeah. that's heavy. I bet you do. It says it's 19 pounds. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's definitely got some weight to it. That's then. heavy. Yeah. And then whole, whole powder barrel to hold. 100 something, some strange symbol. A lot of exploding cannonballs. Shell. That'll go oh, exploding an exploding shell. shell. Three pound cannonball. Yeah, all the way down to little things. Musket ball, sprues. I bet that hurt. <laughs> yeah, where they pretty much put whatever in there. <laughs> yeah. Imagine a bunch of silver and something like that. Yeah. Well, and then pieces, be. pieces here. Oh, striking fl flint steel. So they just used rocks. And here's another sign for you to read, especially since I don't know how to say that. Chevalier? It's not like cavalier, like the car. So, chevalier? But anyway, there you go. This says French inhabitants built this powder magazine in the 1730s as Michelamackinac expanded from a small trading post built in 1715 to a more substantial palisaded fur trade town, although French soldiers kept some powder in the building, most belonged to private citizens. So, all this cool stuff. Another one that you can pause on. But then, in here, that looks like burnt wood. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Yeah, but apparently it had something to do with weapons. Yeah, it's obviously burnt. Yeah. Oh. No, this could be a, an original part of the original fort that burned. I, I think it is. The yeah, they have the powder magazine. All burnt. Here we go. Some more info. Yeah. It's what it used to look like before it burned. Apparently this fort burned down, but they recreated it. Yeah. Which is good. But yeah, all this stuff. Wow. At least they preserved all this. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And there's more. Archaeologists excavated the powder magazine during the summers of 74 and 75. I was born in 1975. So that's as old as me. I'm not, when they dug it up, is as old as me. Yeah, looks like they got a humidifier thing in there. Keep yeah, them. they've got a thermometer in there a too. Thermometer or something, yeah. Yeah. It says it's 67.9 degrees. Oh, okay. Seven, yeah, I think so. They must have to keep an eye on that. But really cool that they uh, preserved it. Yeah, it is. Dug it up and preserved it. Here's what it looked like before they protected it. Oh, yeah, there is a dehumidifier in there. Yeah, I have to try and keep everything dried and stuff. Yeah, well, they have to do what they have to do. They have to preserve it, yeah. yeah pretty cool, though. Okay, so this is a store, Hearthside Museum store. Lots of cool stuff in here. Huh. 
ornaments. That would make a nice puzzle. Um, I think I have this as a poster on the wall next to the TV, but this is a puzzle version. Some nice stuff. That's cute. All right, well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome again to Mishma Mac. Now, my name is Craig, this is Veronica. Before we actually fire off our weapons for you, I'd just like to talk a bit about how these weapons would have been used here in the 18th century. Now, despite our different uniforms, we are both dressed as members of the British garrison that you would have found here in the summer of 1780. And at that time, the soldiers here at Mishma Mackinac, just like soldiers all around the world, would have spent a great deal of time on a parade ground just like this one. They would have spent perhaps several hours a day out here at drill. And that's something that's important to remember. Drill is a fact of life for British soldiers all over the world. Didn't matter where they were stationed, what other duties they may have had, they would have uh, always kind of fallen back on that drill. Uh, and that drill covered a, a variety of different things, different ways to stand, how to move around in formation, but especially how to handle and load and fire these weapons. And truly it is drill that makes these weapons effective battlefield tools. Now we are talking about the era of the American Revolution. People here at Mishla Mackinac in 1780 were very aware of what was going on in other places, what was going on with the war. There was actually some thought that the war might come here specifically and the soldiers may have been uh, uh, required to uh, actually go out and fight. We now know that that never happened, uh, but it was a, a, a pretty real threat to those people here in 1780. And again, that just makes that military preparedness that much more important. But as I mentioned, it truly is what takes this, uh, uh, this piece of machinery and turns it into something that can decide a battle. Now the weapon that we are both carrying is a, a, a replica of a uh, type of musket that kind of the short name is a short land pattern musket. It's introduced in 1769 for infantry use and it's part of a much larger family of firearms that the British military utilized for nearly a century, really going back to the 1720s and up through about the 1830s. They're all fundamentally the same. They're all smooth bore weapons. That means the inside of the barrel is just as smooth as the outside. There's no rifling in there, nothing to impart a spin on the ball. Uh, they're 75 caliber. That means that that barrel is three quarters of an inch in diameter, about as big around as your thumb or a quarter if you've got one of those in your pocket. And they are flintlock weapons. That means that they rely upon this mechanism right here on the side to actually fire. You've got two main components to this lock. This part right here is called the hammer. That's just a piece of steel on a hinge. The other big component back here is called the cock. Kind of looks like a rooster's head and screwed into the jaws of the cock, there is a piece of flint. Flint is just a hard stone. And when you pull the trigger, that flies forward, the flint strikes the steel. And what do you get when you strike flint and steel together? Sparks. Sparks, right. Those sparks are gonna fall down onto that little pan there on the side of the barrel. There'll be some powder placed in there that will ignite, burn through a hole in the side of the barrel, set off everything else inside and propel that musket ball down range. Now, 
it, when people today look at this thing, they think, well, that's pretty uh, inefficient. They think these are pretty inaccurate. And indeed, if you were to put this up against a modern weapon, something that we have right now in 2023, the differences would become pretty apparent. But in the 18th century, this is essentially what everybody had. There was not a better piece of technology floating around out there. Nobody was better equipped. It comes down to how well trained the soldiers were and how effectively they could employ these things. And no one's going to say that the British military was the best army in the world in the 18th century, but they are a professional fighting force. And that does tie right back into the fact that they were practicing with these things over and over and over again. Because as you'll see in just a moment here, it takes a lot just to get ready to fire a single shot. So you have to be practiced. Now, what we're gonna do first is step back and show you very much a by the book firing, literally. We're going to be utilizing uh, 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 an exercise that's published first in 1764. It's designed as a way to test soldiers and to inspect them. So an officer could, at least in theory, go to any garrison anywhere around the world and spit out this set sequence of orders. And the soldiers, again, in theory, should have all done it all the same way. But hopefully, as you'll see, it's also a great way to train soldiers. And as we run through this process, see if you can identify why it might be good as a training tool as well as an inspection tool. Now, we're just going to fire once this first time. It will be a bit loud when we fire. Uh, that's why we're wearing earplugs, and that's why you're going to want to cover your ears as well, especially when you hear the command to make ready and see us point down there towards the wall. At that point, you're going to want to use your earplugs, your fingertips, and just make sure your ears are covered. So with that, we'll step back and again, fire by the numbers. Uh, and uh, again, see if you can identify why this might be a good training exercise. of minor maintenance here. Just gotta make sure that my flint is actually screwed nice and tight there. <laughs> Fortunately, Veronica had her nice little multi-tool there. A couple of uh, <clears throat> screwdrivers as well as a pin. can tell, again, there's quite a bit that goes into that process. Why do you think we would want to use that as a way to both test the soldiers and to train them? What advantages do you think that method might have? Less no ideas? Mistakes. What was that? Less mistakes. But why? Why are there less mistakes? Practice, order, yeah. Okay, let's try the flip side. Do you want to try that in battle? No. Why? It's slow, that's right. I mean, you can't skip any of those steps. They are all absolutely necessary, but maybe you don't have to do them quite that way. Perhaps you could go a little bit faster, and indeed speed was part of the equation. That's something that they were working up towards. Also being able to do all that without someone telling you what each individual step was. So what we're going to do now is step back and fire a couple more shots for you, uh, showing you a bit more of how that drill could be practically applied. Uh, we're going to try and fire twice this time. Once again, it will be a bit loud when you hear that make ready command, so make sure your ears are covered and see if you can compare and contrast what we just did with what we're going to do now. Find the similarities and the differences. Care. Run
She's gonna fall out. We'll keep going though. So go there, try lock. Make ready. Set. Fire. bit faster without somebody telling you what you need to do. Make ready. Set. Fire. So again, hopefully that shows you the value of drill, why you would practice like that over and over and over again. So you could go a little bit faster. The drill standard is something like one shot every 15 to 20 seconds. But of course that takes practice and that's why they would be spending so much time on these skills over and over and over again. That's truly how you make this an effective weapon. But that does wrap up our musket firing. Our next activity is gonna be at one o'clock. It's gonna be a tour focusing on the enslaved community here. So if you're interested in that, that program will get started right over there at the corner at one. Uh, otherwise, thank you all for visiting this afternoon. So if you need them, here are the bathrooms right next to that gift shop we were in. Okay, here is the last section of this big long building, the one with the gift shop in it. We are here. We live about here. The heritage of Michelin Mackinac. Clothing. Here's a, a hat. Corn. Spoon, pottery fish, food, becoming Canadian. And then here's a, a big drawing with a video in it. An important fur trading center and go. military <laughs> outpost, Michelle Mackinac was a hive of activity. Soldiers drilled on the parade ground. The blacksmith hammered in his shop. The priest held services in St. Anne's Church. Women cooked meals and tended gardens. Voyagers unloaded canoes, and merchants checked their inventories. Okay, and here's a, okay, let's find out what this is. A French fireplace, and that's what it says. It's pretty cool. This says, how many can you find on this? A pitched roof, I know a roof pitch. Well, isn't that up top? I don't know if that does. Huh. Is that a light or a light, dude? Oh, a light? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. Right oh, I was wrong. It wasn't up top, it was down further. And then we've got plank roof. On the outside? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, that's cool. Lots of things you can do there. Some more information. Lots of information. The Fox Wars. And a soldier's outfit. And then war. This guy here. Some more artifacts. Those are cool. It's so intricately detailed considering how long ago they were made. And this stuff too. Faith Fern Fort. Here's a, another video. I don't think this one makes noise. Oh. Here in the heart of the okay. Great Lakes, Michelle Mackinac served as a crossroads of the regional fur trade. Well, look From how inaccurate Mackinac, that map of Michigan is. <laughs> Huron, Michigan, and Superior with Canadian settlements to the east and Native American villages to the west. Transported by canoe, Hundreds of tons of furs and trade goods pass through Michelle Mackinac every summer. Okay, and here we have a, a canoe. Here's all the information. Really cool. Lots of fish hooks up there. Yeah. Really cool stuff. Trade goods, beads, metal items.
and then uh, Welcome to New France. Well, they did not keep that name. Wow, this is really cool. Oh, that's nice. Nice model. So, so much detail. And this would be where we are now, but way back then. That's cool. Nope, not where we are. Across the lake at St. Ignace in 1679. That's where that boat landed. Oh, and now we, we come around to the bathrooms. I'm sure they're nice. Don't need them right now. Do you need the bathroom, Don? Oh, my book will come here. Okay. Have fun. Yeah. Okay, we can both vouch that the bathrooms are very nice. But when you come out of the bathrooms, you have this. Another cool model. Of course, it's not cool what's going on there. But the model is cool. And then a map. Okay, we're going to head in to this part. Some more garden. Something smells good, like food. Yeah. Hi. Hey, how's doing today? Good. At least it's nice and cool in here for you. Right. <laughs> uh, I had the window open originally to bring in a stronger breeze. Man, that's oh, and you have to have the fire going? Yeah, I had a good Here's another one, the soldier's house. Still pretty nice. Yeah, it is. I mean, they may not have thought so back then, but I think it's pretty nice. Yeah. And then here's some more flowers and vegetables and things. They grow a lot of things here. And that girl that we just saw was telling Don that she was actually cooking food in there for a presentation. That's why it smelled like good food. Yep, that's why we call food, yeah. yeah. Okay, one more here. Same building. Some more flowers. That's where we just were. What do you see? Oh, okay. no, I was looking for pickles, but that's next cool. thing over. Okay, this is Church of St. Anne, and there is a St. Anne's Church on Mackinac Island, but it's not the, obviously not the same. That one is still functioning, but this one looks pretty cool. Wow, it's pretty in here. Yeah. Here's some more info.
This is really pretty. All wood. Hey, honey, get holy water. You boil the hell out of it. Quit that. And then that's really pretty. Here's info on them reconstructing the church. And then here's the confessional. There's the information. Okay, and then right outside the church door is some more things. This little area you can walk in, in between the buildings. Oh look, more garden. <laughs> oh, this is the black, no, the blacksmith. Oh, okay. Blacksmith Shops of Michelin Mackinac. So there's all this cool stuff. Yeah. Some more plants. And then over here, not sure which way to walk most of the time. <laughs> There's so much to see. All right. I'm not sure what this is. We'll find out when we come around the front of the building. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So this is the priest's house. They have a lot of rain barrels all over the place. Look at this glass. Old fashioned glass. Before they knew how to make it smooth. Yeah. Lots more cool stuff in here. cool staircase. Can't go up there, it's locked. But, and then here's the priest in his bedroom. Pretty bad. And here's all the different priests there were and when. Yeah, there's a bunch of barrels up there above the priest's house. And here is the other, the, the front of it, I guess, the front of the priest's house. And here we are under where we walked up above. That's where we walked up above. It's just, just another well, walkway. Yeah. And here are those really good smelling flowers again. Don thinks they're wild roses. Can smell them from feet away. Really pretty. Mmm, they smell good. Too bad you guys can't yeah, smell them. Wild, wild uh, roses. Yeah. Right here's a rose hip. A rose hip? Roses. Yeah, rose hips and stuff. You can see them. Oh, yeah. Lots and lots of bees, which is good because that helps with pollination. Yeah. So here is the military latrine. Wow. All the way across. No privacy. <laughs> Yeah, I go no, you don't. You were just in there. <laughs> so there's a couple more signs to read. Here, I'll try to get the glare off of them. There you go. You can pause it. And there's this stuff. No, I'm not using it. Yep. But yeah, forget privacy. <laughs> hey, at least you can come in here with mate and sit and go to the bathroom and hold the end at the same time. Oh boy. Look at this rainbow colored wood. That's pretty cool. So now we'll see what's in this rainbow colored building. Hello. Hi. How are you folks doing today? Good. Good. Northwest Row House. 
feel free to look around the room here. Yeah. This is set up as one of the fur traders' houses. They would have been using these predominantly as living spaces as well as warehouse and office spaces. Yeah. Now, I'm just doing a little bit of mending here on this neckerchief. Fur traders and merchants were not necessarily doing that kind of work. One, because tailoring clothes making is a skilled trade, you know, as it still is today, right? Yeah. And uh, the fur traders, that's not what their business is. They're business people. They work with, you know, account books and deals and money and all that. So, but what they did have also was a lot of money. So here at Michelin they had paid domestic workers who did cooking and cleaning, gardening. They may have also had people that they were paying. Well, they definitely did either here or in places like Detroit or Montreal that they sent their clothes to, to be mended um, as well as made for them. Because all the clothing back in the 18th century was bespoke or, you know, tailored specifically for them. Yeah, that's cool. So you would have seen that here. If you have questions, you can always ask me. Feel free to look around the room here. I'm happy to tell you more about the site as well. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, of course. Hello. Likewise, what I was telling these folks, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer as well. Any questions? And then out back okay. here is more garden. If you do, just feel free to ask. They grow lots of food here. This looks like grapes. Okay, so now here is the Northwest Row House. Oh, this one goes down. But we'll have to come back up because it says exit only. So there's lots of information down here. And it's nicely air conditioned, I think. Either that or it's because it's in a basement. It's very cool and nice. Oh, yeah. Air conditioning. Nice. Lots of nice jewelry here. Very old jewelry. Nineteen eighty nine to nineteen ninety seven. These are things they found during that time period. But yeah, they have found a lot of stuff. King's storehouse. Fort Michelin-Mackinac master map. Wow. What is it? Any ideas? Add your suggestions to our mysteries comment book. Refer to the artifacts by number. Hmm. Well, number two, that looks like a gear, right? And what's number three? A spur? <laughs> a very yeah, nasty, the, deadly the, spur? The, yeah, it looks like it would, <laughs> number three would be like a spur where it going back to your heel or something. Yeah, well, that's that's brutal looking. Yeah. For everyone in that word, where you just kick them. Yeah, I don't don't really know what these things actually are. But yeah, that thing looks <laughs> medieval. <laughs> Macabre. <laughs> Here's a button. Who are Jane and Bo? Hmm, stuff with they found his names on them. Why are they here? Military insignia of units that never served at Michelin Mackinac. I don't know. That's weird. Raw copper. And it was found with the other. Jesuit symbol IHS backwards. Some pottery. It's just so weird that they could make make something so pretty and intricate so long ago. It says Michelin Mackinac abandoned. Some wood. Floorboard. It says it's a floorboard. That's from like the fire. Which is more than 16 feet below ground level. Even though the fresh water of Lake Michigan is only. Some more stuff. Some more little models. Quite a few of these, in different time periods. More archaeological finds. Yeah, all 
all kinds of stuff. Here they are excavating. And here it says every summer since 1959. They just keep finding more stuff. So here's another wing. Boy, look at all that excavating. Oh, a cow horn. Cow parts. <laughs> and chicken bones. Chicken egg. An egg, yeah. Fish. Otter. A pigeon. A duck. A beaver. A bear. Here's a white fish skeleton. That's cool. <laughs> Crosses in the sand. Lots of stuff like this. Yeah, the recording just said this fort was abandoned in 1781. That's playing in the background. Priest's house cellar. So yeah, up there is the priest's house we were in a few minutes ago. That's pretty cool. They made it so we can see it. Everything that's in it. French stone weight. And then winter at Michelinackinaw. Some more stuff. Jaw harp. Spears and fish hooks. Yeah, ice fishing. Yeah. And then we come in this very dark place. Posts in the ground. Oh, here's a little uh, press to begin. Inhabitants removed, demolished, or burned Michela Mackinac's buildings when the fort was abandoned in 1781. That's mean. <laughs> Nevertheless, archaeologists can discover what these structures looked like and how they were built because of physical evidence buried in the soil. Archaeological excavation exposed the remnants of rotted logs, which show where walls were located. A That's pile cool. of stones and mortar indicates the location of a fireplace and chimney. The cellar appears as a large depression underneath the floor. Glass shards suggest the location of windows and plaster fragments. And here's more excavating. Lots of it going on here. And now we're back upstairs. And here's a total other room we didn't see yet. Pretty cool. It says British Trader's House. I don't know if there's supposed to be something in there. Yeah. Oh, that's a hole. I just realized it's a big hole we're looking down in. Oh, yeah. Okay. Must... <laughs> that's back where you said you were taking them from down, downstairs? Yeah. That, this is what you look down at. Wow. Because if you stand over here, you can see that one guy that's crouched down. The little, uh, oh, yeah. There he is. All right. The excavating thing. Yeah. And another video. So here's another nice canoe here and we're back around to the middle area again okay and here is the soldiers barracks got one right here more info some directory what's a here a it is kennel and hinge B looks like glass. Yep. C nails. Yep. D a rock. Chinking. I don't know what that is. Some kind of hook. Door hook. A rock. A brick. <laughs> And, I don't know, a door, a door, a door lock. There's another musket. More info. 
Attack, 1763. Beyond the Barracks, there's a book. Some more beads. That's a lead pencil. Clay pipe fragments, draw harps, scissors, brass buckle, all kinds of stuff. I don't know what that is. Oh, a cradle board. Oh, yeah. More drawings. I thought they were all real for a second. <laughs> nope. Some more dishes. There's beds. This is another bedroom, but it's nighttime apparently. Guy trying to stay warm by the fire. Two guys trying to stay warm by the fire. Sounds like it's snowstorming. Connecting doorways as we do right now. Uh, instead, they were just four individual rooms, each of them probably opening up that way onto the parade ground. Okay, now we're we are outside of the fort, and here are these wigwams that we saw before, <laughs> and a shed way out there. Some more info. Then you have maybe the ones who are going not just through that. Pretty cool. There we go. A little bit more gardening back there. <laughs> this must be the jail. It says using the land. I guess this is jail, right? I don't know. Well, I don't know though. We wouldn't. You'd get out of there. Get out of this jail pretty easy. It's all locked up, but. Looks like it could have been a jail. Okay, and on the way out is another bathroom if you need them. But, yep, that's it. All done. Still a good view of everything. What did you think of it? It was pretty good. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Very historical. Lots of Michigan history. Really nice. Oh, for sure. And yeah. the air-conditioned uh, museum part was nice. <laughs> yeah. So there you have it. Fort Michelin Mackinac in Mackinac City, Michigan. We're going to go ahead and say goodnight, and we hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you so much for subscribing, because we couldn't do any of this without you. Say goodnight. Say good morning. And we'll see you next time.